The world is truly a cruel place, and none understand this better than the peasant folk of the small village of Bismont. The village is a fishing town. Their whole economy comes from the river their town is built next to, and the town thrived for a time. However, times became far more difficult in the age of the shamans. It was a well-known fact that spirits roamed this world, powerful entities who silently observed the goings-on of the world without butting in, or ideally that was the case. They blessed those who kept to the old ways, and they cursed those who brought destruction upon their sanctity. Humans were unable to commune with these spirits, but shamans were different. The shamans were a group of extraordinary humans who had the ability to communicate with the spirits and even harness their power. There were those who claimed the shamans were spirits in human form. No one was quite sure. But what was sure was that, while shamans were few in number, they had caused a great change in the world. They tended to pop up in very upper-class and wealthy towns and cities where their services could be paid for. Because of this, many businesses, families, and financiers began flocking to cities and towns with a shaman dwelling there to see their amazing feats. The criminals and bandits used these opportunities to strike at the now dying poor villages and towns without enough income to get by. And Bismont was a prime target. It didn't matter how many fish and crabs they pulled into their nets. By week's end, the profit made would mostly go to local bandits and renegades. While they had done no real wrong, no citizen of Bismont had any love for the shamans. But all that changed on one fateful day. He entered the town in the night, draped in a single hooded cloak, his body muscular and lithe. He hid his eyes under a messy mat of black hair, and some tattoos could be seen on his body. His hands were poorly bandaged with ratty cloth, and his pants were worn from travel. Some thought he was a bandit and avoided his eye, but he said nothing and took nothing from anyone. Instead, he simply looked to the local inn and wandered inside. The tenants stared at the stranger in disbelief and in confusion. It was odd enough to get traveling monks and vagabonds, but one of such strange appearance was especially bizarre. He did not carry the religious symbols of a monk. He didn't have any weapons like a bandit might. He simply smiled as he sat at a table near the window. Water, please, he whispered. He dropped a few silver coins on the wooden surface to pay, and the waitress nodded, leaving to get him a glass. No eyes left the strange wanderer. When the girl returned, he took the water and sipped it down like he hadn't had anything to drink in a long time. He beamed and held out another coin to her. For your troubles. Sir, she muttered, backing away, I don't know who you are, but you really shouldn't have money around here. It's not safe to wave it around like that. You may call me Nomad, the man replied, and why ever should I not pay for deeds done for me? Sir, when the sun comes up, the bandits will... I do not fear bandits, Nomad replied with a smirk. He slid the coin to her all the same. She took the coin and stared at the man in disbelief. This meager wanderer. He scoffed at the idea of bandits and thieves. What sort of person was this? And as the sun began its climb into the sky, the end became frantic. Men and women began to evacuate swiftly to avoid the coming danger. But the Nomad simply sat at his table silently drinking his water and gazing out the window every now and then. The waitress girl hurried to him to warn him. You should leave. I'm not done drinking, he answered. But, sir, it's... You have nothing to fear, the nomad smiled back. Return to your work. I promise that no harm will come to you, myself or this place. No sooner had he spoken than the door of the facility was thrown open and in walked four men. Two were very tall, muscular, one having a bald head and the other with a mane of hair. They had scars and tattoos all over their bodies. The shorter one was quite fat and portly, having a round nose and beady eyes. A bandana hid his balding head, and he had his fingers stroking the blade of a cleaver. The fourth one was younger than the others, with stubble on his chin, an eye patch over one eye, and two swords strapped to his side. All had smiles on their faces that they fanned out, surrounding any of the remaining tenants in the inn. "'Good morning, Yosef. the shorter fat man laughed. "'I hope business is good.' "'We've gotten by,' Yosef the innkeeper grumbled. Oh, "'That's excellent to hear. "'Just getting by is productive, I'd say. "'So how about you give us our share and we'll, um, let you get by,' the fat man growled. 
Yosef trembled silently and pulled out a small pouch of coins, dropping them on the table. The short man nodded his head, and the younger thug approached, taking the bat and counting the money. Twenty-one silver pieces, and only nine gold bits, the young man snapped. Yosef, I think you and I should discuss the phrase getting by, the fat man snarled. That isn't enough to pay for a nightcap. It's all I've made this week. We haven't had any travelers come by lately, Yosef cried. What about him? The fat man pointed to the nomad in the corner who, this whole time, had observed the goings-on with mild interest. He's a traveler. He only paid for water. I couldn't charge him extra, Yosef explained. Well, maybe I can. Torn, he snapped. The tall, bald man smirked and walked towards the nomad and placed his giant hand on the table. Can I help you? The nomad asked. Yeah, I ain't too good at counting. Why don't you take out your purse and count the money as you drop it in my hand, he offered. If money is what you desire, I suggest finding an occupation. Threats of violence aren't very effective at making honest wages, the nomad answered. Angry at his snide remarks, Torn struck the glass of water out of Nomad's hand, who stared at the shattered glass and spilled liquid. And now you've made a mess. Are you proud of yourself? he asked. You talk too much. Torn raised his fist to pound the man's head into the dirt. The girl and Yosef turned away in fright, not wanting to see the man die. The Nomad raised his hand up, and with a slight touch of his palm, he brushed Torn's enormous fist aside and then struck him in the stomach. Torn grunted in pain and fell back. Nomad climbed to his feet and pulled off his cloak. I'll give you this one chance to put Yosef's money back on the table and walk away. The bandits chuckled to themselves, and the fat one just snapped. The one with the mane of wild hair pulled out a pair of throwing knives and hurled them at Nomad. The Nomad sighed and held up his hand, and with a mere mutter, he swung his hand as if sweeping aside a veil, and the knives were cast aside by what seemed like an invisible force. What the? Torn! the fat man cried. Torn lunged at Nomad, who glared up at him, and suddenly Nomad's eyes glowed brilliantly white. He raised his hand and Torn froze, being lifted into the air by the strange force. Nomad then turned and flung the man into his comrade, knocking them both over as he inhaled. The tattoos on his body, like etchings, glowed brightly like his eyes. The air around him felt thick with a strange power, and as his cloak flew backwards, all could see that this man was no ordinary person. He's a shaman! You're a shaman! The fat man cried. I am an instrument of the spirit, the man answered. I ask you once more to leave this place. Before anyone could answer his offer, the young man drew both swords and attacked. Nomad saw him, and with barely a movement, he took a step back and evaded the downward slash. The boy attacked again, and Nomad ducked it. He wasn't even trying to retaliate. The boy, in his anger, began swinging wildly at him. Nomad just smiled, his eyes and etchings never losing their glow. So foolish, he whispered. Skills and talent like yours shouldn't be wasted on such things as this. And finally, after his wild swing of the swords, Nomad threw up his arm and caught the wrist of the young man. He then thrust his open palm into the boy's chest. There was a loud sound like a clap of thunder, and the odd energy that surrounded Nomad seemed to swell up a moment. But as he withdrew his hand, there was a visible burn mark on the boy's tunic. The young man fell forward, his eyes glazed over as he fell into unconsciousness. What the hell? The fat man cried. You shamans are priests, right? Like speakers with spirits and all that nonsense. Why are you fighting us? I do not speak with spirits, Nomad corrected. I am a servant of the spirit, the greatest of them. I surrendered all of it to him, even my own name. It was his will that I come to this town, his desire that I save it. Make no mistake, sir, I did not come here to fight you. I came here to help them, he said, pointing to the innkeeper and the waitress. My quarrel with you could have been avoided if only you'd left when I asked you to. The chubby man trembled with anger and looked at the main haired thug. Get the blunderbuss! The tall man nodded and ran out of the inn to grab something. When he returned, he was holding what looked like a small bronze cannon in his hand. You like it, you freak! It's a new invention from outside the continent. A handheld death dealer. Let's see your backwards ass religious shit stop this bad boy. Kill him! The tall fool lit the fuse and aimed at Nomad, who had not moved a muscle. If it's the spirit's will that I die today, so be it, he answered. 
However, his power will not be stopped by a weapon like this. The sound was greater than any explosion Yosef and the waitress had ever heard. Shrapnel burst from the barrel of the cannon, but in the same instant they closed in on Nomad, the shaman raised his hand. His eyes seemed to glow with blue fire. The pellet suddenly burst into flame and fell to the ground harmlessly, eroded to nothing but dust at the feet of the wandering shaman. Horrified, the man with the mane threw down the gun and ran cowardly away from the scene. The fat man froze in terror and fell on his round rump, backing away fast. Damn it! Damn it! What the hell are you? Just a nomad. The man screamed and fled the inn with all haste, daring not to even look back as Nomad smiled at this leaving. And as the man ran, Nomad turned and picked up his cloak laying on the floor, and his eyes returned to their normal color. He bowed his head apologetically. Forgive me, he sighed. It was not my intention to frighten any of you, and thank you for the water. He then placed a small pouch of money on the desk near Yosef. I hope this will pay for any damages I might have caused. He turned to walk away. Wait, the waitress cried. You saved us. You protected our inn. I merely did as the spirit wanted. He's the one who led me here. But still, you deserve thanks. Why not stay a while? The nomad paused a moment and smiled back at them. It would be nice to rest my feet for a day or two, but I can't stay long. My work is not yet done. You can stay in our finest room, Yosef shouted. I'll get you anything you need, and we'll throw a feast in... No, thank you, Nomad laughed. I will settle for a simple one-bedroom and no feast. The fewer people know that I'm here, the better. But so many people in town hate shamans. They need to know that you're a hero. Many shamans are nothing more than charlatans, the Nomad muttered. They use smoke and mirrors, selling lies and peddling snake venom as medicine. It is wiser for the people here to be untrusting of most shamans. Let the actions of men speak for them, rather than the title. It is for this reason I abandon my name and go by Nomad. If most shamans are fake, then what are you? You can think of me as a prophet, Nomad smiled. And that will be enough for me. He smiled and touched the waitress girl's head in a caring pat. I take my leave. Thank you again for the hospitality. N Nomad, the girl cried. No matter what anyone here says, you're a hero. Nomad grinned warmly at her, and then at Yosef. Bless you both, he muttered, walking to his room to retire for the day. The Nomad would stay in town for another two days before leaving again. The bandits that once had plagued the town never returned to it, fearing the wrath of the terrible shaman within its walls. The people heard rumor of the shaman, but none dared get too close. Though Yosef and his staff tried to convince people of the truth, none were ready to accept that a shaman had come to their town to help them. Despite this, Nomad was not upset. When he left, he took nothing but a walking staff and a small bag of food. He bowed and walked away. And from that day on, the inn in Bisma never ran dry of customers. The place never suffered a storm's wrath or dealt with the pain of famine or disease. It was a miracle, left by a mere wanderer who followed the will of a spirit.